Hi, and welcome to this video on AL dependency and app source. The other day I was asked by a developer, um, how do I get this table? Um, and the table in question was a table that came from a uh, an app source app. And he couldn't find it in, um, in Visual Studio Code. And, and uh, how, do, how, how, how do you do that? Back in NAV, everything was already always available, but in uh, in AL, you need to take dependencies, which is a new thing. Um, so I thought, how about we try that out together? So here is my user cloud tenant. Because one thing that you, you got to understand is that as soon as it's, it's an app source app, uh, you can't really do Docker images. You cannot do, you know, local installations and stuff like that. You have to run on a cloud environment. You have to run on a cloud sandbox. Um, so I have a cloud sandbox here. I have, let's check extension management. Uh, Microsoft, Microsoft, Microsoft. I have installed the SharePoint connector from eFocus. Uh, full disclosure, that's where I work, and uh, this is one of our apps. Um, I even know the guy who, who made it. Um, so how about we try to see if we can take dependency to this one. Um, here is Visual Studio Code. I just did a AL Go, and... Um, the first thing we need to remember whenever we're working against a cloud sandbox is that uh, unless you go in and tell that the tenant you're working on is a specific um, ID, you run into the very, very um, big possibility of deploying the wrong um, the wrong app to the wrong wrong sandbox um, so what we do here is that we update the environment name and we we add the tenant uh, line into the to, to the launch configuration so remember that's actually the ID from up here um, so now that we have that, we can do uh, AL download simples. And we'll see if I'm forced to log in, or oh, this is one of my lucky days where caching uh, Cloud Sandbox logins is some, feels like a lottery. Sometimes you have to log in all the times, all the times it remembers. So let's see what we get here. Um, symbols have been downloaded. So let's see what we got. We got um, we got some base app, we got a system application, and we got system. And that's that's fine. Um, but the the challenge here is that we didn't get all the other things. So what if we needed to use the image analyzer thing? Um, then we would could take a look at this and see, okay, the, the name is image analyzer. And what we actually do is that we will go into our app.json and we can see that we have some dependencies here. So we can add another dependency in here. In this case, let's start with, I, I pasted the name. So let's add the image analyzer. Uh, I'll go back and then I'll grab the, the version. Um, and let's see if we can just drop the whole build thing and say we just want the 16.5 version. Publisher. Microsoft 
And the last thing we want is the, the first thing we want actually, is the ID. Whoops, I never, wow. Let's see if we can grab that here, there. So now we have a dependency on that one. Uh, so let's download symbols again. See what happens. See that up here? Now we have the image analyzer also. Um, and we got a specific build, but we just asked that we need 16.5 or newer. Um, so the same thing we can do with other things. Um, I promised the, uh, the SharePoint connector, so let's do that. Let's start with the ID just to, uh, so I'll just add another section here to dependency. So that ID is this, uh, name is SharePoint connector, uh, version. In this case it's zero, so we can just say we want any version of this. And the publisher is eFocus. You need all four, otherwise you get mad at you. So we, I can do download simples again. And now we got the eFocus. And if we look at this in the uh, the mapping, we can see there are tables. We can see there is a, you know, there's a code unit uh, with all non-Microsoft apps that you pull off App Source. Wow! You know what happened? One of my lights just broke. You know, I'm just gonna ignore that for now. Uh, ha -ha, that was stupid. Uh, <laughs> this is what happens when you, when you do stuff live. Ha. Okay, um, so when a vendor, ISV like us in this case, uh, we submit a, a app to app source, we have a, a prefix or postfix that we need to apply to all our public names. So you can see that in this case, all our objects are called EFQ. Um, this company called e, it's called eFocus with a Q in the middle. Um, but everything is here. So what I can do now is that if I go to Hello World, um, and for some reason, I'm not gonna really run this, so it's more like an example that now I can go and say on open page, I want to create a code unit called SP, and uh, not create a code unit, but I want a variable of type code unit. And this one should be the SharePoint. And you can see that we have SharePoint EFQ, SharePoint Prender, SharePoint Registration Management. We don't really care about that one. Um, and now I can do SharePoint upload file, uh, shared documents slash folder. And I need to supply an in string, in stream, in string, where does that come from? Um, and I need to supply a, in this case, a file name, I'll just do that. So now I'm using a function in a code unit that's off an app source app. Um, so I might not be able to see what happens when you try to navigate. So you're not really getting anything. But again, if we go and look at the, the public symbols, we have all the tables, we have all the objects available, we could use them uh, in, in case of the, um, SharePoint connector, it has, you, you can get SharePoint data all over the system and that's done through a bunch of page extensions. The page extensions, you know, location, fixed access, employee, opportunity, campaign, and so on. In, in reality, what the extension is doing is inserting the exact same uh, fact box, um, so this one, 
So what we have done in several, instead of, you know, messing with our own app, we are, we actually just, you know, doing this. And then in our customization, we're using the same fact box, but creating our own page extension to insert the SharePoint connector into a custom page somewhere else. Uh, and, and you can do this with all apps. So remember we did the image analysis thing here. So there's also a, uh, a uh, contact picture analysis. Let's do, do that just for, for fun. Uh, that was in, so we can do image code unit image analysis. Um, extension management was one of them. I can't remember the name now, but so everything is available to you as long as you add a dependency, you can take. So the file we're getting here, uh, if we go out and look at the um, file explorer, ah, uh, this is so small, you guys can't really see this. But in, in case of the SharePoint connector, we're getting a 13 kilobyte files. In case of the um, image analysis thing, we're getting a seven kilobyte file because we're only getting the public symbols. Um, but that's enough to program with this. There's not, it, it's enough to build. So you can take the app file that you're getting like this and put into a build pipeline, uh, be able to build the extension, uh, but you can only deploy it to somewhere where the app is actually installed and app source apps can only be installed on a sandbox unless the vendor in question also have a on-prem version of the same extension uh, that might that's that's a possibility anyway that was just a you know a quick video on uh, the concept of adding um, dependencies to to other apps uh, and especially app source apps so um, hope you enjoyed it and don't be afraid to use app source apps in this way. Um, we as a, as a vendor try to make sure that there are events and the stuff like that is available so you can use them. And we try to do this ourselves. So when we are using our own app on our own customers, we're not, we're not using a special version of the app. We're actually using the app source version and then we're just doing this. Um, so, uh, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, until next time, have a wonderful day.